is the plaintiff, Robert. He says he parked his brand new Maserati at the defendant's parking garage. And when he picked it up one day, it was all scratched up. He immediately reported it to the attendant on duty and was told management would be informed. Next morning, when he called management, they denied ever hearing anything about any damages and are refusing to reimburse him for his repairs. Ha! <laughs> he doesn't know what kind of scam the defendant thinks he's running, but he won't be pushed around by the likes of him. That's for darn sure. He's suing for $4,993.24. This is the defendant, Juan Carlos. He says he runs 40 garages, and from time to time they have to raise their rates, just like any business. The plaintiff was mad at the rent increase and soon after claimed damage to his car. The guy's making the damages up. As a way of retribution for the monthly increase, he vehemently denies banging up the man's car. The plaintiff didn't report it immediately, and therefore, he owes nothing. He's accused of a cover-up. All parties, please raise your right hand. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case in the docket, the plaintiff says his brand new Maserati got messed up at the defendant's parking garage. But the defendant says the plaintiff's making it up because of a rent hike. It's the case of Maserati Massacre. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome. Okay, Robert, yes. you are suing Juan Carlos's company. You are the supervisor and you have authority to represent, correct? Yes. It's not your company, but you work for them? Yes. Okay. Yeah. For $4,993.24, representing damages to your car as well as parking refund that you want because according to you, you would park your car with them and they would perennially damage it. All Correct. Right. What is going on, Robert? So I've been parking at that parking garage for about six years since I moved into the building. Paid you know, my parking fees on time. I always have some minor issues, some scratches and dents with my old car. Now, you got a new car, or so you then, leased a new car. I what kind of car, car is that? It was a Maserati. Oh, now it hurts if it gets ding. Tell me about the first time that you noticed a ding. So they pulled the car out in front of you. What in day? And this was September 2015. And it was another parking attendant. One was new because they have a lot of turnover. And I was fixing something on the license plate. And I said, whoa, look at this on the front of the car. There's some scratches and a dent. He said, well, don't worry about it. I'll tell the supervisor. Did you fill out any kind of report or form? At that point, no. OK, so what happens? So the next day, I go to the supervisor. I said, did you hear from the attendant yesterday that there was a dent and scratch? He said, do not ever leave the garage without coming to me first as the supervisor, and I will call this into the central office. Did, they, did the person say he never told me anything, or did the person say, yeah, yeah, he did tell me yesterday? That person di didn't come back to that job. So, so you let that, that one go. So and I that's that the one, one that costs 350 to fix. Correct. All right, let's talk about ding number two. So that one happened May on the night between May 12th and May 13th, and this is in 2016. So again, they're pulling the car out, and you can when they pull the car out, you can see your car. And so at the back, there's huge scratches and dents. So this time I stop. I said, call the supervisor. I say, you told me not to leave. Here this is. This happened. This did not happen the night before. I'm following your policy. I'm showing you what's going on. Okay. He says, okay, let me check. I can't do anything unless I check with the night attendant. The weekend goes by. It's Monday. I said, have you gotten in touch with the night attendant yet? Oh, he's still not here yet. So then I call into the central office, and that's when I call the regional manager. Okay. And, I and say, you're the regional manager? You yes. don't work at this particular? No. Okay. So then I call, I say, have you heard about what's happened to my car? He said, no, I haven't heard anything. Yeah, see, here's the thing. You got a phone? Let me tell you what I do. Like, to record that I did something timely, I record that I did something timely. You better believe there's going to be some shots of me talking to, because how do you control whether that person does their job and passes it along in a timely fashion and admits that you timely told them. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Right. So they say, we're going to review the camera or we're going to talk to the employee. He said, the employee who looked at your car last night, he said he showed you that scratch. And I said, that's wrong. He did not. So he's like, OK, let me review the camera because under surveillance. Right. He reviewed the camera and said, 
One, he did not review the, the car last night when Wait, you brought it who in. who did not review? That, that the, the employee attendant. who claimed to have pointed it out to you is not on video pointing it out to you. Exactly. Okay. And he said, for breach in protocol, I suspended him for two days. Well, what'd they do about your car? You don't care if they suspend him. Exactly. So I went back to him. I was like, what about my car? He said, well, he said that it was another day that he may have told you. I said, well, which day was that? He said, well, I, I don't know. He said he can't remember. That's what he's saying? Yes. <laughs> All and right. And then I said, why don't you review the camera? He's like, well, you know, that only works for a week, and then it's released and then erased. I, you know, I, I, he's saying something. You're saying one thing. I don't know what's going on in the garage. I have nothing else to do with this case. Like, if you want anything, take me to court. I'm done with this. That's on the $975 repair? Correct. OK. But then you left the car there instead, and you paid the $975 to repair your car. Correct. And then you continue to park there, because it's just oh so convenient. And it's parking's oh so such convenient. a hassle in New York. And then what happened? Then there is, I'm pulling my car out again, there's a can-sized dent, like a, a Coke-sized dent on the car, and scratches. And I said, really? Is this really happening now? So again, they're saying, oh, that dent we pointed out to you before. I said, really? We just had this whole issue about the dent and all this. And they said, no, well, maybe we pointed out to you before. So I get it fixed. And then I get everything fixed. And then there's another set of scratches. And I'm, I'm wondering Wait, which is the set of scratches that happened fourth? Because you're suing for three of them. So this is the third time. So oh. after I have everything fixed. Then there's another set of scratches. When I bring the car back from the last time it was fixed from the body shop, and then the parking attendant's like, oh, well, you brought it back from the body shop like that before I left the garage. He's like, you brought, you brought it like that. I may have forgotten to tell you. OK, what's the deal? So how do you prove that a valet damaged your car? Well, if there's cameras, I have them look at the camera. Oh, that's a good idea, it's a surveillance camera. But what if there isn't? That's a good idea, though. Older pictures of your car, I don't know. Well, that's OK, but it, but they could say, well, the damage happened after the picture, but before the valet. What do you say? Maybe there's witnesses around and other people that can attest to it. OK, and that's a fair point, going inside the courtroom. Like the gentleman said, he was parking at the garage for quite a long time. And um, when he bought the new car, I, um, because of the luxury, uh, uh, under the parking garage rules, uh, Maserati is, is considered a luxury car, so we increase the rate. Why do you increase the rate? Uh, because this is this considered a luxury car. Luxury car pays No, but more why more. does a luxury car, there's a reason that the, a luxury the, car is charged insurance, more. Insurance-wise? Correct. Insurance and insurance yeah. means uh, that when something goes wrong, uh, you actually dip into your insurance right. to fix what went wrong, which is not happening in any of these cases. Right. So you're charging them more, and then according to him, Oh, you know, the first one he let slide. Right. He's now he's suing for it. But the second one, he also ended up eating, even though you guys couldn't find any recording of you pointing out the damage when he brought it in. And the third one, again, did, did, were you able to find any recording of you guys pointing it out that he brought it damaged? We did, yes. OK, yes. let me see it. Oh, I don't Oh, I, I'm, at the time we did. But the customer did it, uh, the customer didn't request the, the, to see I'm the video. I'm sorry. You're getting oh. sued for that. Right. And you didn't record it in a way that you could bring it to a court uh, of law and show me? With all the respect, Your Honor, this happened almost a year ago. Oh, and, and the, why the do you cameras, record stuff? And the cameras, People the don't only... sue in 20 minutes. Why do you record stuff? I know that cameras don't, record over don't... themselves. Here's the thing, though. Yeah. Most of what the camera's recording is garbage, and you don't need it. But when someone says, you dinged my car, take your phone and tape the recording. So right. that you have a record of whatever it is you're claiming as a defense. Exactly. I mean, if you're managing 40 right. places, this should be easy. You should know how to do that. Because right. now you're standing here, look at me saying, with all due respect, Your Honor, that was a year ago. Really? So you're, you are evidenceless with all due respect. You have zero evidence. I don't, he doesn't start, what do you do for a living? A uh, cardiologist. He's a cardiologist. All right, no, not this. I know if you're eating all these Maserati repairs <laughs> that it was going to be something lucrative. He's not a scammer trying to cheat your. He's angry that it's a third time, and he's had to, and he's paid for the other times, and then it's a third time. Who's that fellow who you did bring? It's uh, it's he's one of the employees at the parking garage that uh, uh, he was covering the night shift on mid 2016. Come on up. What's your name? Hi, my name is Caesar. Hi, Caesar. How are you? So. What you know about this case? Uh, when you're working on midnight shift, the customers come to the garage. I show the, the damage in the front, in the from the bumper two times. One time he told me it's okay, he's go to the building. The second time 
he told me it's okay, he's he going out. Did you write it down in a report? Mm. Are you supposed to write it down in a report? No, because only just talking to the customer about uh, the damage. Do you not have a policy where you have people document any damage that they see? So the when the damage is considered, yes, but we are limited to show to the customer. Once we show that the customer knows about the right, damage. Right, except for uh, that there's a dispute in court about right. whether you ever showed it to the customer. All right, let me see all of the repair bills. You're suing for a refund of parking from March until June. You want four months refunded to you on account of what? Because you parked there. Yeah, because they... Because they're annoying you? No, because they put me in a state for those months of perpetual disarray and Affect stress. your heart. And, you know, <laughs> is there going to be something wrong with my car? And, you know, unfortunately... That's why you can't drive a precious car. Hand them the, the, the uh, repair bills, please. That's silly. You parked there. I'm not going to order them to refund when you had the service. Okay. Now, the March bill, you went ahead and paid yourself because you hadn't followed the protocol of making sure to speak to the supervisor, even though you feel that you followed enough protocol by telling the fellow. Do you Probably have any saying. proof that you told the fellow and that you told them when you were walking out? That the I answer do not. Is no. no. All right. Then the June bill is uh, for the May damage where, according to you, they see on the tape that, in fact, he did not tell you, and then that guy got suspended. Is that the middle one? Correct. Okay. And then the last bill was the one where there's a dispute between the two of you about whether or not anybody, according to you, they wouldn't show you the tape. And according to you, you saw the tape, but you didn't kept keep it. And according to you, you're the guy who tells them both times, even though we know the guy who told them this time didn't tell them. The middle time, you admit that somebody got suspended. Let me okay, just suggest, nice if you're running 40 lots, you have to run them better. Um, you have to anticipate that one day you're going to be in front of a judge. How often do you guys have to go in front of a judge for damages? Not this. this because do you uh, normally you just put it through your insurance, or you don't like? No, 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 no. We will, most people you just we work with body shops. Or you uh, work with body shops. Why didn't you uh, work with them? Absolutely, we might have, but I didn't. You know, when we do, when we do the damage, we fix the cars. But when we don't. You know, okay, we, except for that we know that that's not true because in the middle one, you you suspended a guy for two days for not checking the car. So the you didn't fix the middle one. But he didn't fix. He didn't check the car, and the car came came with the damage. How do you know he the car came with the damage if your guy didn't ch check the car? You How do you know? See, you can see in the in the camera. Oh, show it to me. I don't have it. Oh, okay. Well, you know what? It's going to cost you not to have had it. So I think right. that you need to do a better job of running forty places. So as right. for the first one, that's on you. Okay. But as for the other two, where. He does follow procedure. You, you don't deny he followed procedure. He immediately tells you before leaving the lot. And, you, and you're looking at me right in the eye and saying, trust me, judge. So what have we got? Thing one and thing two, $2,175 in damage repair. And as for the parking refund, no. And as for Uber rides to the shop, do you have the proof of it? Yes. Show I'll it to it. me. Show me a 13 and a 6. I didn't print out the receipt, but I have it here. You know what? I'm not even. It, it has yeah. to cost at least that much. $2,194, verdict for the plaintiff. Good luck, folks. So the plaintiff gets less than half of what he was seeking, which was almost $5,000. I mean, are you surprised at what the judge just decided? You really didn't have much defense, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I think, uh, you know, uh, not having uh, a lot of evidence, it was a mistake on our end, even though uh, everything happened according to what uh, we said. Okay, well, thank you very much. Sorry thank you lost you. this case, thank okay? You. you must sign some documents. Here comes the cardiologist now. <laughs> you said something that the judge caused, made me think when you wanted money back for, for parking there for four months, a refund for that, and you said it caused you to be in perpetual disarray. Correct. What, what, what does that mean? What do you mean by that? Every day I would go to the parking garage wondering if I'm going to have to be in another battle or war because there was a scratch and they wouldn't admit to it. And so it just caused a lot of stress. One thing that I learned is that, you know, be careful what you tell people, because I was ready to settle this with the parking garage supervisor, but he said, I don't want to talk to you. Take me to court. So here we are. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Prevailed. you. Thank hope you. you don't have these problems again. I uh, okay. hope never. Judge says maybe no Maserati. <laughs> <laughs> but a Honda. <laughs> I'll get a Honda. Okay, good enough. Thank, Thank you. you. Harvey, what do you think? Just by the way, a little warning. You know those tickets you get to disclaim liability when you park your car? Those things are enforceable, even if they're negligent and they damage your car, you're out of luck. 
That'll do it for this case. Litigants for the next case on the way into the courtroom right now.